Hello West Michigan, I'm Linda Balkema and you are watching Alive and Well. We are at the Mercy Health Youngberg Auditorium for a student heart screening and with me is Dr. Dan West. Hello Dr. West. Hello there, thanks for coming out tonight. Yes, and tell me, boy, you've had a good turnout of students here tonight. We've got a great turnout. I think we've got about 180 kids that we anticipate showing up tonight. Wonderful. And so this started out, we were talking uh, about it was athletes at first, but now we're talking about just students in general. Well, orig originally we just uh, were using high school athletics as our primary group that we were drawing upon, but we realized that every kid, every high school kid is at risk of sudden cardiac death, and every high school kid participates in some kind of vigorous activity, whether it's an organized school sport or whether it's something they do on their own. So we have opened it up to all high school students. Um, explain to me how this setup works here. <clears throat> Certainly. Uh, the students are given a questionnaire that asks them some specific questions about risk of sudden cardiac death with physical activity. Uh, they bring that form with them. Uh, they're checked in by one of our staff at the front. They come back to the next set of tables where nurses and mid-level providers will review the questionnaire with them to see if there's anything that needs additional information. We check their blood pressure and pulse, make sure those are okay, and we found many, many kids that have had inappropriately high blood pressures. Uh, after that, then they go over to our next station where an EKG is obtained. Uh, this is all free, by the way. EKG, just walking in and getting an EKG at the hospital is going to cost you about 100 bucks. We're doing that for free. Uh, after they've had their EKG and their questionnaire and their blood pressure, then they're examined by one of us physicians. And if we see anything of concern, whether it's the questionnaire or the blood pressure or the EKG or our examination, then we take them over and they have a quick echocardiogram, an ultrasound of the heart. Okay. Well, yes, and that, I know this is a big scare for many parents. There's been some highly publicized, even locally, and I know in Grand Rapids and even here in Muskegon, there's been some students that we've unfortunately lost to sudden a heart attack is basically what it is, correct? Or is it different with students? Well, it, it isn't technically a heart attack. A uh, heart attack is something we think of when arteries clog in the heart. These are young men and young women who are at risk of having their hearts in effect stop. They go into a lethal heart rhythm uh, and it's some, some of these can be predicted. Some of these we can see abnormalities on EKGs or physical examination that can clue us into who's at high risk. Some of them we can't predict even with this, with this program we've got going but our belief is that we can find at least 50 to 75 percent of the kids by going through the screening process. That's right, and if we save even one kid, it's worth you know, it. it's very much worth it, and, and we want to identify any students that are at risk. Uh, do you think that there is a rise in this, and if so, why is there a rise? I think the, the number of kids who, who die during physical activity has not changed appreciably over the years. It's like everything else in our society because the news media permeates our every waking hour. Yeah. One time we had to wait till 6 o'clock at night and watch uh, Walter Cronkite and now we've got 24-7 news coverage on, on uh, several different networks. So we're aware when something happens to a young person in California or Oregon or Hawaii, whereas before maybe it was only local news. So we hear about these, but I don't think there's been an, an, a real change. I think the change right now that we're hoping is, is to try to identify those individuals who are at high risk before they have their fatal event. Okay, well, first of all, I don't believe you're old enough to remember Walter Cronkite, but, oh, <laughs> but, but uh, it's true. Because of the media and publicity, we do know about this more, but we also, it brought attention to it, and it brought this, you know, this event to happen, and it's going to make parents uh, feel more reassured, I think, about their students because they're all so involved with so many athletic activities today. So you don't feel that the fact that they're doing more activities than they ever did before. Some, some of these students are three and four sports a year, um, but that doesn't increase their risk? Uh, I do not see any evidence that, that that increases the risk. I think in the past, kids may have been working just as hard or harder on the family farm, so uh, I'm not so sure that that the sports themselves put them at increased risk and again that's why we've opened it up to all students. We know that physical activity in certain conditions can increase the risk but whether it's sports or whether it's hard work mowing the lawn or, or bringing in the hay on a farm I'm not sure that it's any different. Yes, and, and with obesity on the rise and, and some of the other conditions that we have especially here in Muskegon County we want to make sure that our students do stay healthy and do stay involved in athletics and work and these activities so this just reduces the the fear factor and we can identify the risk okay so tell me Dr. West what are some of the risk factors maybe that parents should watch for or know about with their students well the questions that we ask in the questionnaire uh, it primarily involves 
symptoms that occur with exertion. For example, if someone is developing chest pain with exertion, we get worried. If they start getting lightheaded, dizzy, or in particular fainting with exertion, that's a concern. Everybody gets short of breath with activity if you push yourself hard enough, but sometimes people have inappropriate degrees of shortness of breath with activity. Most of the time, the vast majority of the time, none of these symptoms are important, but sometimes they are. And our job here is to try to figure out if these individuals are at risk of having something dangerous happen. Okay. And you've also noted that this year there's more students that have elevated blood pressure. That's unusual to see so many students with higher blood pressure? It's a little surprising. As an adult cardiologist, I typically take care of people much younger than this population. So if somebody walks into my office with a blood pressure of 148 over 100, I consider that a mildly elevated blood pressure and we treat it appropriately. When I see people who are 16, 17, 18 with blood pressures in that range, it's of concern. And maybe these have been identified already by their family doctor. Maybe it's the anxiety being under screening. Maybe that's elevating it somewhat. But I think that when you see a blood pressure in that range, particularly when the bottom number, the diastolic number, is elevated, that can be an indicator that that individual is at risk of developing significant blood pressure problems later in life and needs to be monitored closely, needs to consider being on a low sodium diet, needs to keep their weight down, uh, and you know at some point may need medications. And what about energy drinks? Could that elevate the blood pressure? Well there's stimulants in energy drinks and that's correct and that can elevate the blood pressure short term. I, I don't know of any studies that show that it, you will develop long-term blood pressure problems because of energy drinks but I think very clearly acutely in the short term it can elevate the blood pressure. Well, good to know. Those are all things that we should be aware of and that parents need to be aware of. And uh, this is open to students every year? Every year. Uh, in Europe, this is mandatory. To participate in athletics, and in Italy in particular, you need to go through a program like this every year. So this isn't a one and done. This is something that we encourage people to come back because, frankly, the problems we're looking for uh, can develop as, as young people go through the teenage years. It can be something that's not present one year and can be identified the next. Like heart arrhythmia, is that common? Uh, abnormal enlargement and thickening of the heart muscle in particular, and sometimes things can show up on EKG that can clue us into that. Okay. And we were talking a little bit about what this normally would cost. Each of these stations and the tests that students are going through here, Certainly. it's all free. This mm -hmm. is free and do well, it once a year. You know, the, the foundation of our program is an EKG, and if you walked into the hospital getting an EKG, it's probably going to be around $100 for the EKG and the interpretation, and that's free to everybody that walks in. Uh, they're seeing a, a physician for the physician, a brief visit, obviously not to the extent you would get when you go and see your family doctor, but you get to have an encounter with a physician that's uh, focused solely on your risk for sudden cardiac death. Uh, if anything is of concern regarding the patient's history, the EKG or the examination, they're gonna get a quick uh, look echocardiogram, an ultrasound of the heart, not the extensive study that may follow if we see any abnormalities, but frankly the kinds of problems that we're looking for here we can find very quickly. A five minute uh, evaluation with an ultrasound of the heart can look for problems like abnormal thickening, abnormal enlargement, or abnormal weakening of the heart that can place that individual at increased risk of sudden death. Wow, so this is such a great thing that Mercy Health is providing to the students. Now, is this planned to be the same time every year? Is this an annual event at this time? It's annual. We do it several times each year. And uh, again, you can get the dates and maybe even show them on your, your broadcast. But uh, we're doing it uh, about once a month for the next few months. Uh, we have done it for the last three years, and we have done it different times of the year depending on demand. And fortunately, the demand goes up significantly when there's a tragedy in our local area, and that's what's really driving the, the turnout this time. When we did the same program last, last fall, uh, we had less than half of our slots filled, and now we filled all the slots for three or four of our sessions simply because people are aware of that risk. Unfortunately, it takes something very tragic to happen to bring awareness, but I guess the good part of that tragedy is that there is awareness now. If good can come up bad, that's what's happened. So we do. A great turnout here, and we will make sure that we get those dates publicized. Any other last words you'd like to give to our viewers? No, you need. Thank you for coming and helping us publicize this, because I think the real key is public awareness. Uh, when you hear in the news that some young person dies, then you're concerned about your, your child and you want to get them evaluated. But these kids aren't just at risk when someone else has had a tragedy. They are at risk all the time, and we want to be able to provide that service for uh, every, you know, in the future for every year. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you.